Hi everybody, welcome to today's webinar where we're going to discuss um, or we're going to work a little bit about cryosurfacing for beginners. So I've just uh, prepared a few slides just to get everything going here. So just quickly the agenda for today. So I'll do a quick int introduction um, to boundary systems. Then I've prepared a few slides um, on surfacing. Just a, a nice overview of the tools I think we'll use the most. And then we'll jump into Creo and I'll do a little bit of a demonstration. And then afterwards, we'll have a question and answer session. With the questions and answers, um, you can use the go to webinar um, pane and you can type those in, um, but I'll only answer them um, after I'm done with the demonstration. But as you think about these questions or when I go through a certain um, tool, um, and you have that question, type it in and get it to me and um, I'll manage it afterwards. Okay, so just a little bit about myself, really just two points. So my name is Pierre Fenter. Um, I'm part of the Boundary um, Systems Technical Specialist team and I've been using Creo for, it's, um, it's, it's 10 years within the channel of PTC and it's about total um, 13 years um, with various customers as well. So just a little bit about um, PTC uh, or about boundary systems rather. So these are a few um, of the um, logos of the companies that we that we help. Um, so we help them with uh, product lifecycle management, data management. Um, we do CAD design and consulting for them. We also do simulation work and then product development in general. Okay, so some of our major accreditations. So we are a PTC Platinum Partner. We're also a Winchell Certified Implementer, PTC Preferred Service Provider, and then we're also a Certified Training Partner for Creo, Winchell, MathCAD and Arbitex products. Yep, so just a little bit of the solutions that we offer as well. So I think PTC products is the main one here, but we have EdRage, Keyshot, um, CMAX, um, ZWCAD, Xformation, Moldex 3D. So um, a few solutions that we can help you with. Okay, then on to the, to the stuff we're here for today, and that's surfacing. Okay, so. Um, there's two paradigms when we talk about surfacing. Uh, we're going to talk about the technical surfacing aspect today. So that's things like um, like a component going into a dashboard of a car. Um, the other one is freeform surfacing, where you just drag surfaces around, where there's more feel to it. So like your um, mouse, um, your your commute, computer mouse, um, things like that. We we're going to move. A little bit more to the technical surfacing side of things. Okay. So I'll show you some tools that, that we can use. So when you start with surfacing, um, the most important thing is the datum features that you need to create. Okay. So um, curves, datum points, um, axis, coordinate systems, things like that. That's the most important because that's going to drive your design at the end of the day. So um, I'm going to spend a fair bit of time in this because it is important and as soon as you, you you can manage this then you can start managing your surfaces and the creation around them as well okay so for the beginner stuff there's only a few tools that that you can use to actually create the the actual surface but the datum features that you that you use that will that will put you ahead of everybody else so that's the that's the important bit so we're going to look at how to create points on intersections, how to create items within a sketch, um, how to create curves through points and use vertices as well um, through a point array. We can use cross sections as well to create um, those curves. And then we're going to talk a little bit about um, wrapping curves and um, projecting them as well. And then offset curves as well. So also a handy tool that you can, can use. Okay, then, then the one um, tool that I sort of um, think we'll use the most is the boundary blend tool. 
um, keep in mind that you can use your normal extrude, your normal sweep. Um, I'm going to do a helical sweep as well. So you can use your normal solid tools and you can create surfaces from them as well. Okay, so just keep in mind that um, a solid sketch, for instance, needs to be closed loop. If it's a surface, you don't need that anymore. Okay, so in this example, there's a few datum, um, datum curves. Um, there's datum points that we're going to use. And there's also um, other surfaces that, that we can use. So, um, so keep in mind that you can also use solids and surfaces in the same model. So it's, it's not like you're bound to one design methodology. You can use whatever you need at any stage. So this is this is the one example that I that I that I've chosen to show you guys today. So we're going to use the helical sweep and we're going to do um, surfacing with it, and we're going to um, create a datum curve from that surfacing model. And then I think everybody knows the um, the the solid capability of um, of the helical sweep. So we can we can do that as well. And obviously we can combine all of this. Okay, then as you start working with surfaces, you need to be able to analyze those surfaces and see how they flow into each other. So there's a few tools that we can use. So I like the, the reflection one, the, the one like, that looks like um, zebra stripes. So that's, that's giving you a nice indication of how the, the surfaces will flow in each other. So I'm not sure if you guys can see on this particular um, slide, but there's in the middle of that of that um, component, you can see the the zebra lines doesn't actually line up. So then you know it's not a nice flowing surface. So you you need to go and um, add tangency or maybe tweak your curve a little bit just to just to get a better flow on that particular surface. But there's some tools that um, that you can use to go and investigate those. And then I've mentioned um, using your, um, your surfacing with your solids a little bit. So the three that I've picked that we're gonna discuss today is the thickening surface. Um, so you design a surface um, and then you wanna thicken it. Uh, maybe you're gonna stamp it out of a plate or press it or do something like that. Okay, so you can design it We're using surfacing and then just thicken it. That's going to give you your material thickness. And then we can also use the solidify option and we can cut away material. So you can see that one corner of that um, cube. Um, so we, we have some funny cut, cut out there. That's going to be extremely difficult to create with rounds or thing or with a revolve or something like that. So using surfacing, you just draw a few curves on, on the side surface create your boundary blend through that, and then you can cut away that corner. Then we also can use the offsetting surface, and while we're offsetting it, we're going to replace it um, as well. So you can see um, in the bottom left-hand um, picture over there, we're going to extend the solid model, and then that's going to take the shape of our surface that we've um, designed. So, So if you quickly want to grab a screenshot maybe of this um, with all my contact details, so you can drop me a mail at any stage um, asking questions. If you think about something next week or whenever you're busy with a certain design, feel free, free to drop me an email. Um, if I'm not available, I'll transfer that to the support guys and they will handle it as far as they can um, and then get get the more experienced guys involved if, if, if they need to. Okay, so let's jump into Creo. So I've picked out about um, 13 components that we're gonna work through. Um, it's just components that's, that's gonna show you the functionality a lot easier. So I'm not going to go my normal route where I start with a certain um, design and then work through everything. Um, surfacing is, there's so much information and so many tools. So I've handpicked a few and I'm just going to show you these tools 
um, with certain components. So the first one that we're going to work with is the, the point intersection. So, so we have a component over here. We have our standard datum planes. We have a few curves that's already on a surface. And we're just going to create extra points, um, but we're going to use the intersect functionality. So you're going to start your normal datum point tool, and then your selection will determine where they are. So I can pick the, the edge, for instance, and then if I hold control down, I can click the right datum plane, and that's going to jump to an interception. So now I know that curve and where that datum plane are intersect, I've got a I've got a datum point over there. If I pick the one curve, holding control down, picking the other curve. So now I have a datum point over there. So now I can use these datum points and I can drive curves through them again. Okay, so let's do another one on this side. Okay, and then also what you can do is you can pick a surface. So that's free on that surface now. So that can be anywhere. What I wanted exactly where the, where the surface and this axis um, intersect. So I pick the axe and now I know that that datum point is exactly where my axis and my curve um, intersect. Okay, so it's easy. Um, I think you use the normal um, datum point tool. It's just driven by the clicks, okay? And you don't have any offset values or things like that. So you just pick multiple things and where they intersect, that's going to create your, your datum point. Okay, so let's open up the next one. So sketch datums. So a really nice feature to use if you um, if you if you want to keep your model tree a little bit shorter. Um, if, if you don't want axes all over the show and if it makes sense to put it in a sketch. So I, I guess my rule nine out of 10 times would be that um, if a sketch is driving um, a certain surface, then I will include my datum features in that. Um, if I need to use the datum features for something else, then I will do it outside of the sketch. Okay, but that's that's something that that you have to play with um, in your designs, see which one's going to work best for you. So let's edit definition, this sketch over here. And you can see we have a few um, construction lines over here. So I'm just going to go and create a datum point. So I'm going to say where that construction line intersects with the curve that I've drawn. I'm going to place data points over there. So I'm just quickly going to go out of this and show you. So there's my datum points created. Let me zoom in a little bit so you can see that. Yeah, this color is actually not the best for this. Let's quickly change that. Yeah, so you can see that little brown dot. There's the, there's the datum point. But you'll notice in my model tree, I don't have the datum point over here. So that datum feature is embedded into my sketch now. now. I can still use it as a normal datum, but it's just embedded in that sketch. And the same. And the same goes for the center lines. So I can take a datum center line and I can draw it on a certain angle. Let's do it like that. And if I go out of my sketch now, you'll notice that I've created datum feature, datum axis. Yeah. All right, so keep that in mind. It's a lot, it, it, it can help you to drive certain geometry a lot easier within a sketch than outside of the sketch. I mean, I don't have any references over here to to create a datum x on that angle but inside a sketch it's possible okay and then i think the next one let's open up 
a curve through points and a vertex. So I'm going to leave this one just like this. And we're going to create a sketch or a curve um, from this vertex here over here through the point over here and then to the next one. So I'm going to use normal curve. Wait, 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 something. Go through points, there we go. I grab the vertice, holding control down, picking the datum point, and then create the next vertice. So as soon as I turn this, then you can see how, how that curve is actually shaped. Okay, so as soon as you do that, you'll notice these little drag handles over here. So I can do a few things with them. So I can right click on them and I can tell them I want it to be tangent, curvature continuous or normal. So I'm going to make it tangent and then I, then I have the option to select the reference. Okay, and then I select the edge. So you can see that's tangent to that edge now, and then flowing into that um, into the rest of the curve. I'm going to do the same for this one. Okay, so now you see my lines is running a lot smoother into the into the edges that I've selected. Okay, so something else that I wanted to show. Um, it's this datum plane. So that. So that datum plane is driving that point. So by changing the datum datum plane, I can manipulate my curve. So I love this on the fly functionality where it will update. You can see how it's reacting. Um, I use that a lot when I'm working within my um, with the curves, especially if it's if it's going into um, into this 3D type thing where you have to view it from the front or from the top, and it's just not always easy to, to see that. So play around with your curves um, to to pick up how they would change if you if you make a design change. Okay. So the next one that I wanted to show is I'm just going to create a curve on this side as well. So I'm going to I'm going to do two over here just to show the difference, and I'm going to make it tangent again. So you'll notice this one jumps to the other side. Okay, so you can just pick on this arrow, and it will swap the um, the orientation. And then I'm going to do this same. Pick that edge again, and I need to swap that orientation around as well. Okay, so. I've used tangent for both of those conditions, the start point and the end point. Uh, and this is just a good example to show you the difference between the, the tangent and the curvature continuous option. I pick my reference again, same on this side. Okay, so the curvature continuous one will just it will just stay a little bit longer on that uh, on that path of the edge that you've selected, and then it's uh, and then it will start the curve and it will um, end it a little bit sooner, flowing into your curve. So depending on your on your design scenario, um, play around with both. It's easy jumping between them, um, so that can that, that can help you to to smooth out surfaces as well. And then let's move to the next one. Okay, so here we've gone and we've they've made some points for us already. So let's just add a definition that to see what, what we've actually got. Okay, so they've They've used the X, Y, and Z coordinates, and they've plotted data um, points from where it should start to where it should end. Okay. So you can import uh, a, a point file as well um, if you get this information from 
somebody else or a different system or something like that, you can import um, datum, datum points. So let's go and create a curve. And you don't have to go and select each and one of them because some of them really can be a lot. I'm just going to undo that. If you pick one and you right click once, you can grab all of them in one go. And then you, well, I've, let me cancel that and do it from scratch. The ones that I've selected is there not. So I'm just going to, there we go. So it was right, one right mouse button, and then I selected one point and it picked up that all of them was under one feature. So you can see that in the model tree. Okay, so same rule apply. I can change tangencies and things like that. In this case, we don't need to do that. So we have our curve. So we can easily go and create a solid sweep over here. Just going to do that quickly. There we go, something like that. Okay, so that's that's when you have an array of points. And the next one is the cross section. So you'll notice, let me just hide these datum planes. So you'll notice we have cross sections that we've created. You activate that and then on the fly out where you create your curves there's a curve from cross section option so if you pick that the reference that you have to select is what um, cross section so you can have them at different angles um, everything that goes for cross sections you can create and then if you if you want to convert that to a curve you use this option so i'm just going to use a and you'll notice that we have our curve over there. And now once again, I mean, we can go and we can sweep what, whatever we want to. And just to show you, whatever you need to add, that doesn't make design sense at all, but you know, it's, it's well, what you can do with that. Okay, so that's the cross section option. And then the intersect one. So this is this is one of the, the tools I use a lot. So I'm going to spend a little bit more time on this. I'm going to create something from scratch. So we've got two surfaces. We've we've got a revolve. You can see that's that's quite a funny shape that's in the middle of nowhere. And then we've got a normal extrude that's intersecting that. And if you pick one of the surfaces, the intersect tool will be available. You pick that, hold control down. So I need to select two surfaces. I select the other surface, finish that, and that curve will be our result. Okay, so let's hide that. Let's hide this as well. Let's quickly create something from scratch. So I'm going to use normal extrude surfaces. And I'm just going to draw a curve. Something like that. With an arc. Something like that. And then I'm going to extrude that. Yeah, I just quickly want to create a little bit of an offset plane over here. And I'm going to do another extrude on that plane that I've just created. Let's do it like this. So I'm going to create, let's call it a line. 
in a park again. It's Let's call it something like that. Okay. Let's move that around a little bit. Something like that. But, okay, so I didn't pick um, my extrude to be a surface. So Creo noticed that I've made an open sketch. So it's asking me, do I want to change this to a surface? Oh, well, thank you. Uh, yeah, I'll do that. Okay, and there's my two surfaces. So let's create the intersection now. And let's quickly hide those two. So now you'll notice that's very close to that bed lamp type component we had earlier. Right, so without creating the points and the bits and pieces. You can use intersect surfaces, um, work it from um, one from the, from maybe from the left view and then one from the front view, um, where those straightforward, simple extrude will intersect and you can get some really funky shapes with that. Um, if we go and we change, let's change this point. You can see how that curve is driven by the other surface. If I extend that a lot, it's going to curve around it. You can see how something like that can manipulate your curve. Okay, so once again, we have some nice dimensions and things here in, our, in, in, um, in a sketch or in an extrude that can help you to modify it. Okay, so it's not that freeform scenario. Right, so intersect tool, I use that quite a lot. Let's move on to the next one. Oh, the project and the wrap one. Also one I use quite often. So what we have here is some uh, wave type surface, and we're just going to look at the difference between the project and the wrap. I'm going to pick my curve, and I'm going to say project. And then I need to select the surface. I'm going to pick my surface and let's finish that one and look at it first. Okay, so that's just a projection. So as you view it from the top, it's just taking that straight down onto the surface. Wrapping is a little bit different. Wrapping is more like you have with your um, decals and things like that. So that's under the edit. You say wrap. I pick up the surface and you can see that's a lot different. Look at it from the top again. It's just okay. So there, there, there's the difference between the wrap and the projector. Use them as you need them or depending on your design. Okay. Let's move on to the next one. Curves offset. Right, so it's also one of the tools that's you know editing. So you just pick the edge and you can say offset over here, or you can go offset yeah, at the top, and you just specify a value and it's going to project it, it's going to keep it on that surface. So it picked up that it's on the surface and you just offset it with a certain value. Yeah. So if you if you want to just have a 0.5 offset from the surface that side, do the same this side. And then we need that one with one. This one should be 0.5. And do the same for this side. Yeah, so now you have that surfaces and so now you can create with a certain offset from the edges, you can build a different surface or play around with the different variants. Um, you can use these curves to, to create other surfaces again. 
Okay. And then we're going to come to our cover. So we're going to spend a little bit of time in this in this component. So we already have a few sketches. You can see sketches over here. Uh, we have datum curves that's been created. So you can see in the model tree. So you can see these are all different ones. So that just shows that this part was maybe imported um, with curves only. So depending on uh, where you get it from or what the design criteria was, but you can see this, there's the import component. And then there's this whole bunch of curves. So now we need to build a component from this. Okay, so this is where we're going to use our, our boundary blend tool. So let's just step one step back here. So we've worked with the extrude where you can do surfacing. We use that for the um, for the intersection tool. But if you go to all the other tools, your solid type tools, you can do surfacing in them as well. Right, so your revolve. The sweep as a surface option. And you use them exactly the same way as uh, um, as, a, as a solid feature. You know, the only difference is the, is the sketching that you that you'll change. There's also a, sur a surface option for the sweep blend. So all your traditional solid tools can be used for um, surfacing as well. Okay. So these tools over here, I think the only one the, the style feature that's ISDX, so that's the um, interactive surface design extension. So that's that's for um, for extra surfacing capabilities, um, and it's also an extra license. So we just want to use the boundary blend tool for now, and let's go and create a few surfaces here. So you'll notice that we have two directions that we we'll, that we need to specify. You don't have to use that always. I can use only one. So I can pick one, holding control down, pick the other one. I've only used the first direction, but I've picked two change. Now I can finish that. Okay. Okay, so in this, this component, that's not going to make a whole lot of sense. So let's delete that. And let's start the tool again. So I'm going to build this one from the top, or from the bottom rather, and I'm going to will use all these curves up until the surface at the top. Okay, so let's let's do that. So I'm holding shift down now. So shift allows me to um, pick a chain. So shift is down and I can pick, and then I can also trim this, this edge. So I don't want to use it. I want to trim it where this curve is. Uh, so trim it, that curve. So there's chain number one. Holding control down, I pick the next edge or curve and now my surface starts building so shift down again pick that one pick the next one once again i want to trim that at the middle and i can use my curve or i can use the datum point okay. let's use the curve holding control down again so notice what happens here in the first direction so i've got two chains now so holding control down Pick the next one. So now I've got three change, a uh, change, and then shift down. It's going to add to that chain. So see my three didn't change up here. So I can pick the next one, and then I'm going to trim it again. Add that curve, and we do it again. Control down, shift, pick the curves, and trip. And then the last one, control down, pick the edge, and then trip. Okay, so now we can see, well, our surface is there, but it's not close to what we want. So we've got the second direction that we can use. So let's activate that. So I can either right click and say second direction, or I can go to curves, and I say start the second direction. So that's highlighted now. So now I can pick that one, and then I need a second one. 
I'm going to pick that one over there. And there's our shape. Okay, that's starting to look like something now. So let's do that. Okay, so it's not really a clean surface. Um, that's just my, my edge quality. That's, that's a problem there. Um, I can adjust that, but then it slows my system down a little bit. I know it's connected over there. Otherwise, it would have failed. Uh, so let's edit definition this, and let's just add some tangency. So I'm going to right-click this one, and I say make it tangent. So it automatically used um, the surface that was already there. So if you want to confirm that, you can go and you can see tangent, and it's going to give you the surfaces that was used. Right. Let's use this bottom one. Make that tangent as well. You'll see if you highlight them, it used this bottom surface. So you can already see that that shape is that's that's almost what we need. There's something else that I wanted to show you just quickly in this example is the control points. So control points, if you pick the edge uh, or the undefined, you're going to have certain points. So you can see we have about what, three, four lines over here. So let's just go there. Pick all of them, and that's going to change our our surface a little bit. So let's use this one here. So you can see that's a much better, much better surface. So it's a, it's flowing a lot better. It's not using all the points from the curve. So I've manipulated that a little bit. So. Essentially, what happens is you have all these little bits and pieces. And if we do an analysis on that, you'll see each time it goes over them, um, these little, it can form little dents and uh, things like that. So you want as, well, you need less sections and more surface. Right? So that's why we build this whole section with one go and not build that section separate, and then use a boundary blend, create another section, then do that section, then do that section. We take, we take as many curves as we need, and we try to build our surface around those curves. So essentially, your wireframe and your datum curves, uh, that's the important bit. Okay. So that's why I've um, worked through those options in the beginning as well. Okay, so that's, I think that's the important bit on the boundary blend tool. Um, let's quick, just quickly discuss the other options in there. So there is um, influencing curves. So curves that, that you can use to adjust your, um, your shape a little bit. Um, it's, it, it's a little, little bit of a catch-22. It will guide it a little bit. Um, and then you have some some settings on how to set the smoothness of things like that. Um, there's room for it. I don't use it that much. Um, I'll rather use um, controlled curves with datum points. And then if I need to manipulate my my um, my surfaces just slightly, I'll use those those parametric datum features that I build in to manipulate my my curve. It's just I'm in control. Um, I can do with it what I want. Where with this, with this option, it's not, it's not that great. Um, or it's not, it's great, but it's not um, allowing you to control it 100%. So you make the choice, play around with it, um, and see what it can do for you. Okay, so let's go to the next one. I think this is the helical. Yeah, so we've got a, a full surface here, so that's just a flat surface, and we've got this cylinder. So there's a little bit of a draft on it. The draft is set at zero now. So let's um, go and create a helical sweep. Under sweeps, I'm going to use my surfacing option. And the first thing that we need to do is create our I picked the right thing here. No. Helical sweep. That's the one. Just saying. So I'm going to create a surface and 
we need to create our profile. So let's quickly create that. And I'm going to use the edge as a reference. And I'm just going to draw something like that. It's so just straight. But I need to specify the helix axis. So I'm going to select the middle one, center of the cylinder. And then I need to select my profile. So what I'm going to do over here is I'm just going to draw a line, but I'm going to start it with the inside and I'm going to keep it long like that. Just a straight line on the bottom. And there we have our helical surface. Let's change the picture a little bit here. Let's make it three so we can actually uh, even more five. So we can actually see what's going on here. Okay. So let's create that intersection first. Let's see what happens. Intersect. Oops, I didn't select the other half of it. There we go. And let's hide these surfaces. We can see, so there's our curve on our surface now. So now we can, um, we can create um, like a sweep on that again, um, like the coil, obviously the, the, the you don't have to do this. You can use the standard helical sweep and just do a solid. It's going to give you exactly the same result. So I'm not even just going to do this quickly. It's not the not the right way to do it. Okay, so let's cancel that. So we can use that that curve for various things. And let's change that draft. Let's see what's happened. What what will happen? Uh, Let's give it just five degrees. Generate that. All right, so that curve is following it. Okay, so let's let's play around with that. See how that curve is following that draft. Okay, and just to be we can also project that onto this surface here at the bottom. And let's add this intersection and it's hard to draw as well with the extrude. Let's do the full as well so you can actually see what's going on. Right. So we use the helical sweep and a draw feature um, with the intersecting tool and then the projecting as well. So I can give you something like that. Okay, so now that curve we can use for surfacing to drive um, a certain design again. Okay, so let's move on to the next one. So these last three is just where you've designed a certain surface and now you need to go to a solid. Um, so this particular one, we need to give it a thickness. So I picked the surface, uh, let me just grab all of it, one go, and then I can use my thicken option. And I can give this, compo this surface a thickness. Okay, it will only allow you to go as far um, when there's intersection curves or as soon as the geometry starts intersecting, then it's going to stop you. So you can see that it's sort of intersecting in this corner over here. So there is a limit on your, on your shape that you use. You can also change the direction. I can go to the other side. And then if you use the direction, you can go to a mid-plane option as well. So bottom, top, mid-plane. 
Okay, so there's a thickness on the surface. The next one that I want to show is the solidify remove. And this is the one where we have the little corner. So let's just go into wireframe quickly. Okay, so you can see this is my solid. And then the purple line is the surface that I've created. So let's so let's put this back into shading. And then I'm going to use, I'm going to pick the surface. Then I'm going to use solidify. And because the surface was already selected, it's going to take that and it's going to replace the surface. I say, well, okay. So I had some curves on the side over here and over there. So I can do any funny shape thing in here. Uh, just create a surface like a boundary blend, um, use that, and then I can use that surface to cut out certain sections from my design. And let's go to the replace one. Okay, so I'm going to pick my surface, I'm going to say offset, but then on the flyout over here, I've got a few options. So the last one is replace surface feature. So I'm going to replace the surface that I've selected with the with the gray surface that I've designed at the top. As soon as I pick that, it's going to create that funny shape feature on top of my extrude. Okay, so, so I think these last three examples are, are good examples on, on how you can use surfacing to complement your solid designs so you don't have to use one or the other they they should complement each other so so try to use them um, to make your life a lot easier surfacing and there's a lot of advantages in that um, and a lot of advantages in solids so if you can combine that with your uh, within your design environment then you are on the right track yeah, so I'm just quickly going to put up my contact details again. Um, you can um, take a screenshot of that and then I'll give you um, a few minutes to get any questions in um, that I might need to answer. So I'm just going to mute myself for a few minutes, get those questions in and I'll try to answer them. For the guys that's going to jump off, thank you for joining us today.
Okay, so we have one question. Um, and the question was, was this particular surface created with a boundary blend? So yes, you can see these curves that was used. Um, so there's the, there's the two curves and the one at the top that was used to create that particular surface. So I hope I've used the right example. If not, let me know. Okay, so there's no other questions coming in. So I'm going to end the webinar. Thank you for joining us. If there's any, any questions, uh, feel free to email me and um, I'll answer them as soon as I can. The webinar will be not available for download, but it will be available on our YouTube um, site. So go ahead to YouTube, search for Boundary Systems, like our page there, and you'll get notifications on that. Okay, everybody, thanks for joining us. Bye.